subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you're Indian and you've been on social media in the last one month, there is no chance that you missed desperate pleas and calls for convalescent plasma online for COVID patients. Plasma is a component of the blood and convalescent means currently recovering and convalescent plasma contains antibodies. So we hope that by giving an infusion of antibodies to patients who are currently suffering from COVID, we might give them a better chance at fighting off the virus. However, unfortunately, the science is not that simple. In this video, we'll take a look at what convalescent plasma therapy is and how it works, why we use it for COVID and whether it works for COVID. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Blood plasma is yellowish in color and is a component of our blood. It holds important proteins like albumins which maintain the consistency of blood, fibrinogens which are responsible for clotting and globulins of which antibodies or immunoglobulins are a kind. We've seen before how antibodies are produced and how they work and when they're produced. They're produced slightly later in our immune response and they're tailored to the pathogen that's currently attacking the body. So a sample of convalescent plasma from a person who's currently recovering should typically be full of antibodies. If any plasma sample does not contain the proteins that are required for coagulation or clotting, that is called serum. That's the difference between serum and plasma. Plasma, with all of its antibodies, theoretically is supposed to work like this. When a person who's suffering from COVID currently receives an infusion of plasma with antibodies, they receive temporary protection from these infused antibodies for a while while their own body prepares to produce antibodies. And as an extension, we think that when there is so much virus that we need increased antibody levels when a patient is really critical or desperate, we think that let's bring in some plasma and boost these antibody levels temporarily. That's the theoretical basis behind its usage, but spoiler alert, it does not work in this situation. There have been many, many studies on convalescent plasma therapy to treat COVID where plasma from someone who's currently recovering from COVID and has antibodies is extracted and then transfused into a patient who is sick. Some studies have been very big, such as the recovery trial, which had over 11,000 patients. Most other trials have had fewer than 200 people. In all of these studies, plasma was given at various stages, immediately after diagnosis, during initial breathing distress, during oxygen support and during mechanical ventilation. Overall, in studies that have been relatively rigorously designed, the conclusion has been pretty much the same. Convalescent plasma does not help in reducing hospital stay or preventing progression to mechanical ventilation or preventing mortality or death. There is a narrow window where it works as demonstrated in one small study from Argentina with 160 people. This study concluded that if an elderly patient receives convalescent plasma with high titers or high levels of antibodies, within 72 hours of onset of symptoms or within three days of first symptoms, then they recover quicker. But who gives plasma within 72 hours of mild symptoms? Most people recover on their own as the disease runs its course. Plasma is usually not and should not be recommended at this stage when someone has extremely mild symptoms. But in the same trial, others who received the plasma therapy did die, which is actually another risk that some studies have indicated with convalescent plasma therapy. Just this year, in January, Maharashtra paused its trial on convalescent plasma. This trial had 472 participants and it was actually quite a big study. However, an interim analysis of the data showed that among those who were receiving plasma, there was an increased incidence of blood clots and increased deaths. In this study, 
people who were receiving plasma were actually dying faster so the trial was stopped midway because data indicated that it was unethical to continue any further there will be links to all of this in the description below of course and then lastly there are chronic infections which is ones where symptoms are present and persist for a period of time for a few weeks to a few months sometimes in some cases people who are hospitalized with covid can remain hospitalized for a few weeks or even two to three months so now studies have also indicated that using plasma therapy for treating chronic covid or the ones where people are hospitalized for two to three months over time can actually lead to the rise of new and dangerous immune evasive mutations in the virus which can then lead to of course new variants of concern so bottom line here is that the evidence is pretty clear plasma does not work and in fact can be quite dangerous but intuitively it feels like an infusion of antibodies could boost a patient's response so people try it anyway as a last ditch effort in fact in many countries it is recommended experimentally as a part of clinical trials or as a last resort sometimes families and loved ones and doctors want to do something so they push for it or families pressure doctors into the treatment there are many reasons why there's a mad rush over plasma but awareness is increasing and at the end of the day the therapy does not work to treat covid and it is expensive through its history of use plasma has in fact shown very limited efficacy against infectious diseases so where does it actually work plasma therapy works great for autoimmune disease treatment where a person's own body produces antibodies against its own self so plasma therapy works by removing a large amount of antibodies from an autoimmune patient's blood and then putting healthy plasma back in plasma is also used to treat burn victims but here it is the clotting proteins that we want not the antibodies so much plasma can help burn victims heal their skin faster now all of this said there are still going to be people donating plasma and there are now plasma banks being set up also when people donate plasma the way blood group compatibility works is slightly different from with blood donation when donating plasma what exactly is a person donating we are looking for antibodies antibodies attack antigens or any substance that our immune system recognizes as foreign antigens are basically proteins or sugars or carbohydrates that are present on cells or on viruses like the spike protein we also have antigens on our own cells a and b are different antigens that are present on the surface of red blood cells blood type a have a antigens blood type b have b antigens o cells do not have either a or b and of course a b have both a and b antigens plasma contains anti a and anti b antibodies which also naturally occur in our body this is all plasma not just convalescent plasma which contains antibodies against covid so a person of a blood group a will have anti b antibodies in their regular blood plasma and vice versa that is why when you transfuse blood from an incompatible blood group the naturally present antibodies in the recipient attack the transfused blood and this can lead to a severe or fatal reaction every person has natural antibodies against naturally occurring antigens that are naturally missing in their bodies group ab will have neither anti a nor anti b antibodies in their plasma while group o will of course have both so a patient with group a cannot receive plasma from anti a which is present in blood groups b and o but is not present in ab group ab recipients can only receive group ab plasma but can give to anyone group o recipients do not have either a or b antigen so they can safely receive plasma of any blood group but group o can only donate to group o because they have both anti a and anti b antibodies so 
Universal donor and universal recipient are switched when it comes to plasma donation as compared to blood donation.